Should Christians exchange Christmas gifts? For most Christians, gifts are as much a part of Christmas as putting up a tree or watching Elf or wearing those old-fashioned underwear with the opening in the back because, you know, at first your parents thought it looked cute when you were a kid and, and now it's just a mean joke. But have you ever wondered why we do it? Why we exchange gifts? I mean, some people might say, well, it's because the wise men gave gifts to Jesus on Christmas. But that doesn't make any sense. I mean, if the whole thing is about people giving gifts to Jesus, why do we expect gifts ourselves? Others might say it's because it reminds us of the gift that God gave us on Christmas. But I mean, shouldn't Jesus be enough? Right? Does a PS5 or a Jelly of the Month club really scream, God is with us? Still others will say that it's a way to show love to people. And yeah, sure. But since when does the Bible equate love with material gifts? And why is that the custom we chose to celebrate the birth of Jesus? The truth is most Christians have no idea why we exchange gifts on Christmas. And any answer we offer is something somebody made up to justify a practice that, let's be honest, we kind of like and really don't want to get rid of. But still, that doesn't escape the question here, which is, should we? Should Christians exchange gifts? And if you're interested in finding out the answer to that question, stick around. Now, before we get started, please take a moment to go down below and click that subscribe button. And then while you're down there, go ahead and click the little bell next to it so you make sure to get these videos each and every week. If we want to know whether or not Christians should exchange gifts, the best place for us to start is to go back and look at the history of exchanging gifts to see where this practice even came from. And the crazy thing is, it's actually a pretty short history. One thing you should know is that Christmas hasn't always been an accepted holiday in America. In the 1600s, before America was even an independent nation, the Puritans of Massachusetts declared it illegal to even celebrate Christmas. And between 1659 and 1681, there was a fine of five shillings imposed upon anyone who broke this law. And in the parts of America where Christmas wasn't illegal, the practice of gift giving actually looked much different than it does today. For many years, gift exchange centered around the practice of wassailing, which is where wealthy landowners would give gifts, usually food or drink, to the people who worked for them. I mean, just think of the song, Here We Come A-Caroling. Originally, the lyrics were, Here We Come a wassailing," which makes much more sense when you look at the lines that say, We are not daily beggars that beg from door to door, but we are friendly neighbors whom you have seen before. They're making clear that they aren't beggars. They're people that the rich person knows. And in exchange for gifts, they offer goodwill. Love and joy come to you, and to you know also too. And God bless you and send you a happy new year. And God send you a happy new year. And notice here where the exchange is happening. The wealthy are giving to the poor. But in the mid-1850s, something changed here. You see, for a long time, December had been seen as a season of excess. Fruits and vegetables had been harvested in the fall. Meat could be eaten fresh rather than salted because it was getting cold enough to preserve it. And things like wine and beer were just about to come around and, and be ready to consume. And somewhere around the 1850s, we noticed that retailers begin to take advantage of this season of excess. They begin to market that in this season of luxuries, it's an opportunity to buy things you wouldn't normally buy because you're already consuming things that you wouldn't normally consume. And over time, as most things do, this became an accepted and essential part of the culture. The retailers won. They built their profits into the very fabric of society. And as we can see, this still holds true today. 30% of all the retail sales for the year take place between Black Friday and Christmas. And last year, Americans spent over seven and a half billion dollars just on Black Friday alone. So if we're honest, we probably have to admit that exchanging gifts with one another for Christmas has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. Exchanging gifts is so entrenched in our traditions, it's almost impossible to imagine giving it up altogether. And most of us probably couldn't even if we wanted to. Well, I wanna give you some alternatives that you and your family can do instead of the traditional excess. And here they are. One idea is to set limits and to set low ones. I mean, if you're gonna give gifts, limit how much you spend. This does two important things. 
First, it dispels the notion that what you spend on someone somehow reflects how much you love them. And two, it forces you to get creative. I mean, how often have you given a gift to somebody that had no real meaning or emotion behind it? Right? You just felt obligated to give to them. Or you needed to match what they spent on you. Or you just needed to check their name off of a list of all the people you have to buy for. But when you set a limit, you can't reduce love to a cash value. You're establishing in your heart that this isn't what Christmas is all about. Which actually leads to my second suggestion, which is give memories and experiences. Let me ask you, can you name five gifts that people gave you last year? How about three? How about one? But I bet you can remember the time that you and the people you loved made dinner together or drove around to see the lights. Because the truth is that we tend not to remember stuff. Right? For the most part, it's just more stuff already added to the excessive amount of stuff that we already own. But something's different when it comes to experiences. We remember them. We remember people. We remember laughter. We remember the love and the connection that we felt. I mean, I'll be honest. Right? When I look at the pictures of the micro-machines and the computer games I got as a kid on Christmas, I feel nothing. But when I look at the pictures of me and my family at my grandparents' house on Christmas Day, or at the pictures of all the candles lit up in the sanctuary at church on Christmas Eve. Or those pictures of me and my cousins as kids wearing those long underwear pajamas with the buttons and the flap in the back. That's something different. right? Because those pictures are tied to memories. And those memories are tied to emotions. And those emotions are tied to people. And let's be honest. God came to be with us for the purpose of connecting us with others through love. So let that be a focus of what Christmas is about. Another alternative to the traditional practice of exchanging gifts is to just create some different traditions. I think that one of the reasons it's impossible for us to imagine giving up gift exchanges on Christmas morning is that's tradition, right? What else would we do? That's what we do at Christmas. But what if we could create some different traditions? What if instead of spending so much time shopping and spending money, we found a new way to use those resources. Maybe it's serving together at a soup kitchen or watching your favorite Christmas movies. Maybe it's making cookies together or taking those cookies to a lonely neighbor or a local nursing home. Maybe it's making crafts with your kids or wearing ugly sweaters with your friends or just devoting more time to your relationship with Christ. There's a chance for this season to become something else, to not feel like you've lost something nostalgic, but that you've gained something new. There's an opportunity for new things to look forward to, new things to cherish, if we're open to it. And that actually leads me to my final suggestion, which is when it comes to exchanging gifts, give your gifts to Jesus. Maybe gift giving isn't such a bad idea. Maybe we just need to rethink who we're giving to. I mean, look at what Jesus says. Jesus says, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. There's a chance here for us to reconnect with the roots of Christmas by giving gifts to Jesus himself. I mean, if Jesus says that whatever we do for the least of these, we do for him, then what if we refocused our gift giving on giving to the least of these? I mean, let me ask you, does your church do some sort of Christmas offering for people in need? Are there nonprofits and ministries in your area that are helping people who are hurting? Are there people who are around you who are hurting themselves and just in need of help? And what does it look like for you to help the least of these? In fact, I want to take it a step further. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you this year to let what you spend on helping the least of these match or exceed what you spend on everybody else. And so what I mean by that is that if you spend $500 on gifts for your family and friends, spend at least $500 helping the least of these. If it's $1,000, spend $1,000. If it's $2,000, spend $2,000. But whatever it is, let what you spend on helping the least of these match or exceed what you spend on everybody else. Here's the thing. I know I'm not going to stop most people from giving Christmas gifts to people they love. And I'm not even sure I want to. I mean, I have beautiful memories of Christmas morning. I love the feeling I get when I see the joy on people's faces when they open the gifts that I've just given them. But here's the thing. At some point, we all have to be honest with ourselves and say that this isn't exactly how God imagined we would celebrate Christmas. I mean, the whole point of Christmas is that God came to be with us. God came to seek and save the lost and the hurting and broken. 
And that's the purpose of Christmas, to remind ourselves of that good news, of that story, that God is with us. The purpose of Christmas is to remind us to go out and share that good news with others, to let them know that salvation is here, that they have hope because they have a Lord and a Savior in Jesus Christ. It's a time to remind ourselves that the salvation we've experienced isn't just for you and me. But Jesus came to save the whole world. He came to heal the world and restore it to what God intended it to be. And people need to hear that. But even more, they need to experience that. And we have the opportunity to show them. To show them that Christmas isn't just about giving more to people who already have more than enough. But it's on bringing our hearts back to Jesus. Remembering that God is with us. What God has called us to do and who God has called us to be. And then living that out in everything we do. Not letting Christmas be a time when we take a break, but actually an opportunity for us to proclaim this good news more than ever. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to go down below and click that thumbs up to say you like the video. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you get these videos each and every week. Have a great week. We'll see you next time and God bless.